L up here. Let's dive in. Had a subscriber asking about the routing with Contact 7 and Studio One. So let's dive in. There has been some changes. Definitely. And I want to take advantage of it. So there, I'm going to probably stumble across some stuff because it's, it has. Yeah, it, there's some changes. I just know how to do what I need to. But I know that there are several ways that you can route stuff using Contact 7. So let's do it together, guys. So, yeah, this is Contact 7. As you can see, there's this new library. This also corresponds with the Complete Control MK3. Like, I can see this. Let me mention this. Here at the bottom, the bottom strip here, these are instruments that are suggestions maybe and when you click on any of these these will definitely take you to the web so just just be mindful you can get rid of it minimize the look you know to get full resolution or for for an advantage of you know the actual plug-in but you can bring it back you know this this might be a cool deal make you see what's going on I feel like it changes over time. So we got this little deal here at the corner where we can resize contact like we want to. I don't know if we ever did that before, but yeah, we can do that here. Really cool stuff here. All right. So I'm not going to do a tutorial on how to operate contact, so to speak. We're just talking about the routing. All right. So let's just pick something. I'm going to pick a random instrument i'm going to first show you how i use contact but then we're going to go a little bit deeper because there's other things that you may or may not know all right so this is um all right whatever we we're not doing a beat like we usually do I'm just showing you how this stuff works. So say this was my first instrument. Contact can support up to 16. Just know that. That's the protocol of MIDI anyway. It's been like that for years. It may change. But contact for many years only supported up to 16. I know a lot of y'all probably didn't know about that. But I have went up to 16 before a couple times. I probably do like maybe 11 on a normal basis. No, you know, 11, 12, 13, something like that. Anyway, I come back in here. We're going to go to library, which you got to be careful now, because if you go here and you pick something, you will overwrite. And just based on how it's built here, I'm 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 I don't know. I'm thinking this may replace the complete control. Because it's 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 two of them. It's they they both are different in their own ways. But Contact Seven is a player that supports up to sixteen instruments. Complete Control is here. It only does one at a time, and then you can add effects and stuff in there. Right. That is the difference between Contact Seven and Complete Control. Now. The way that they built this is if you overwrite, you go ahead and just pick another one, it will overwrite what I just put in here. You see, like there is no, so it, you will get confused. Like, wait a minute, is this complete control? No, it's contact as we know it, like before, you know, it's the same stuff. Um, the other thing I noticed is that like, okay, I'm going to come out of here because I'm I, First of all, let's come out of here. I'm going to change the view. Let's get the rack view as we are familiar with, right? Again, if we pick something, like double click, it will, uh, it will overwrite, right? Yeah, it will, it will overwrite. Like, I, I don't know if that was the normal behavior, but. Right, whatever. But in order to stack them, we have to grab or drag over whatever underneath it. And this is how we stack 
right? So now we have two different instruments, and I'm just going to just grab a few of them, just kind of show you how the routing works in here. So let's just grab Duet, you know. I'm going to probably do like maybe four. How about fill it? Minimize that. Let's bring that in here. So, so that's about four instruments, right? So when you click this deal here, it collapsed it or expanded, right? Which is which is cool. Now, something that's different happened, and I don't know if, if it's something I can go in and settings and change, but I notice that every time I bring an instrument, now this is how you stack instruments. You can have different instruments doing the same thing, but building a thicker sound. But in this case, that's not what I want to do. If I click to the information tab, See, this is the difference. This is a snapshot to, to get access to your presets, right? And then you have this other button here, information tab, and it deals with routing. I'm noticing all of them in in the MIDI. The MIDI is 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 showing me Omni for each of them, and I, that's not what I want. When anytime it is on Omni, it means that all of them is going to trigger at the same time. I want to go to port A one the next one port a two and so forth this one is three this one is four there was a point where this was done automatically you see what i'm saying so i'm thinking i don't know if it's something i have to do up here in the settings or something like that to change the behavior it's i don't know I have to I have to inspect that. But that's how we get the media the different media. Now, now that we did that, we have to duplicate this. All right, so we have four of these now. And we're not done. I have to come here and change that. Okay, that's automatically event one. Okay, great. This one is two. Change this to event three, and now this is event four. Now, we are doing that because we want these different channels, and it's different in a range window. We want these channels to correspond to the different instruments inside of contact. As you notice, let me minimize that. As you notice down at the bottom, this is my mix view. We only have one, one instance, right? Remember, this is one instance, but it can handle up to 16 different instruments, which means it deals with routing, output, that type thing, you know. So it can handle blah, 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 X, Y, and Z, but it's just one instance. This is a method I rather, I rather use when, when doing, you know, work, production, or whatever, because... To me, it kind of keeps down, even though you have different instruments inside the player, it it kind of keeps down the CPU, if you will. I don't even know if that's even a thing anymore because when they change Contact 7, they they definitely optimize it. So I, I feel like you can have several instances of, 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 of Contact 7. That would have, that was true for Contact I mean, complete control. You have several of these, like any other instruments, you know, if you're grabbing like Massive or if you're grabbing like uh, Spitfire or you're grabbing, I don't know, Battery. And I'm looking at Impact right here. You can grab that and or um, DV or, you know, just different instruments that you will use, that you will pull for. Like having an instance of those every time you create something, I, I want to say that was the case with with complete control, you could have like a bunch of these in the same session and it was fine because it's just one instrument, right? If you have a bunch of contact instruments, it's a player. So I'm like, it might be, yeah, it might be a little bit heavy on the CPU, but it, that's not the case anymore these days, I don't think, because even if I look at the the performance here, I can see contact right now is at zero. 
So even at a idle state is zero, which is great. That means that's yeah, that's really good. That's real good. Okay, so now that's about seven percent. If we go to the next one. I think it just depends on the instrument itself. Right, so just say we have all four of them going, that will definitely spice up the CPU, of course, absolutely. So, yeah, anyway. So we was able to hear these four different instruments and they are separate. So that means you could do something different on each one of them. But okay, this one deal down here, okay, we got four different instruments. We want them split out because we want to do something different. Okay, great. That's that's what this video is about. So let's go here in not library, but view. We want to open up the outputs, but before we do that, let's just get rid of this keyboard because we don't need that. So now let's look at the outputs. And I encourage you guys to play around because like I say, they they change up a lot. Like, yeah, you can have different, yeah, so you, okay, so this is the side pane, single view, um, this is very interesting. If you're in a live, if you're in a library, in most, most of these views won't matter, like right there, I just, yeah, that is confusing. I feel like they should get rid of the view or not. Maybe if you know what's going on, you should be okay. Or it should, should be able to still change stuff even in library. Anyway, I digress. So I'm going to click library again. And in this view, yeah, you could just choose. And that has always been the case. We, we can choose what we see see at the top Damn, maybe they're, they're gonna redo this this because i don't know how many people use that i mean it's useful stuff up there you have a a tuner up here and you got the master volume and you can still put effects in here um we got the quick low i don't i, I use it a couple times anyway um Let's get out of that. So we have the outputs, right? All right. So mine is like this by default, as you can see. Anytime I reach for a contact seven, it's always going to get, and I have mine up to 16, six, yeah, 16 tracks, right? And then this, I think these are aux. These are the four aux. I don't use them. I don't even know why. It's, it's, it just, it's like it's put there by default. But anyway, Let's just go from scratch. Like what you guys will probably see or like you're on this video like, OK, let me see. Clear out. Yes, I think. All right. So, well, actually. You know, that's kind of cool. I didn't realize that that's what that what that does. What was that set current output selection state for it as a default? Uh, you know, I might start using this. <laughs> I might start using. I don't remember exactly what I just did, but okay. Okay, so I think this is what I, where I was before, right? And then we did a reset on. Gosh. Okay. So that's presets, right? That's 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 the thing. You have presets, you could definitely go that route. Okay, say you want 16 and then 8, 16 and 16, 16 stereo, 16 mono, because it can definitely support. This thing can support a bunch of outputs, but just remember the instruments, that is the thing. The amount of instruments you can support is up to 16, I believe. I don't think you can put past that. So you could definitely get a bunch of out, you know, outputs. Wow. And this thing also supports surround sound. But if we're looking for simplicity, 
the now this is I think that's what I did clear output selection and create one individual for each channel load it man I've been doing things backwards for, for a very long time <laughs> um anyway that's that's cool because I'm gonna show I'm gonna show you this so usually what you do and this is for custom so if you come in here and you can say hey I want to create 16 like this is well let's go for eight let's go eight tracks right the quantity is eight the number of channels is two number of channels mean left and right stereo if you say one that means mono if you go up to four you getting into surround sound territory right so let's let's do that real quick so say we want four that that's giving you know i don't know left right center uh, near field i don't know this is whatever you want it that's for instruments that support that though i'm going to say a scene you definitely want to make sure you select one of these because if you don't you're not going to hear any sound so you definitely want to like kind of mount it to stereo one i don't know that's kind of weird like this is kind of weird like what is going on like kt was that kit stereo one stereo one two stereo two one so these are left right left right and then here's three you know the, the third channel here the fourth channel these are like defaults and then his his five um wow okay it goes up and up and up and up and up i think it goes up to 64 or something like that yeah up to 64 so you could choose where to mount this is confusing i just say click the first one right let's keep it simple the first one delete the current channels and you can click this or not if you want this to be your default you don't have to but let's say okay and guess what it does it creates surround sound so it gave us four channels which within that that quantity you know we did eight so we got eight of these and we have four channels within them and like i said it's always going to create this aux which i never really use so that's a method but this is what i do i just use i usually just keep mine at 16 you know and at any given time i might go in and, and change and two is fine i'll say boom keep that and then i just usually go for default configuration and my 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 routing just kind of stay the same the entire time that's just kind of oh okay look at that i didn't even realize these that's interesting wait a second before we do that let's see what does uh wow that's interesting but it still sounds stereo though but I think whatever you do inside of it, maybe, you know, something to hear dealing with. Uh, I don't know. We're not going to go far into that, but that's kind of cool. Now it just kind of adapt to what you just did down here. Anyway, back to what we were doing before. So go up to 16, two tracks mounted here. Boom, boom. Right. And yeah, so this is our default. So one through 16 my default routing you can also save presets say you have a different a different preset for just anything right so that's there i think i talked about this before yeah we already did that you can do battery save if you want to and but no those are batch functions i'm sorry but I like this one better. Yo, this one is so dope. Cause it labels the tracks. I I check that out. It labels the tracks for me. That might be that might that's what's up. I have not realized it anyway. Let's let's leave it like that for now. So that means you can you can add whatever tracks in here. And say there's a another one that you just added. 
right? I'm not going to change nothing, right? Or maybe I should. Maybe I should. Okay, let's not change nothing. Is, is that Omni? Okay, let's see if that does. If it will, okay. Yeah, it did. It took it. So we got the soul sets, which is one, rudiment second, duets, fill it, then addition. Sweet. All right, but you still have to change this. So this is the fifth one, right? So and we still have to add it here. So we're going to say five, right? And that's going to be my fifth one. Uh-oh, we don't hear nothing. Oh, snap. So that didn't work because we got the, we forgot to mount it. Now, okay. Split instruments router to the first. I don't know what that means. So that comes out. Oh. Oh. Okay. That makes sense. All right. So the next step, which leads us to the next step. Why are you not hearing that? You know? You have to come in and open it up. Now I'm going to just kind of open up a few of them. Let's go to eight. Let's see. Let's, can we hear two? Okay. Sweet. I thought, I thought it didn't do it. Because if you come here, like I say, like if you don't connect, it don't talk. I thought it was because we didn't, you know, whatever. Anyway, so so it's good. We good. Right. And then. Right. OK, sweet. The reason why you would do anything like this is because you may want access to your own plugins that you have on any given of these. So now you're putting effects in here at doll level. Now, this is how easy it is in Studio One. I can't speak to other doll platforms, but this is easy. I enjoy how this label each track, which is super dope, but you have to come in here and label stuff. You have to label stuff in the mixing window and you have to do it in the arrange. And this is the part where it's not fun. So this is so sets and keep in mind, you know, let me reiterate that the arrange window is different from from the mix window because as you as you guys saw we was able to create several several midi situations and that's and that's building your midi from the same instrument now if this was a total different instrument then you will definitely see things in your mixer section but we're dealing with one instrument and so you're kind of adding on it and you're just kind of mimicking I don't know, just make it make sense for your workflow. Everybody do something different, but this is more so for the beginner. I, I'm labeling the instrument according to what it says in the channel, but I usually go by the sound. So if it if it's if I find a roll type sound in like say like fill it. Like if if That sounds like an organ, right? So I will probably say organ or maybe do like a dash and say organ just to kind of help me gauge what sound that is. You know what I mean? Because at that point, it's not really about the instrument name. It's about the sound that the instrument is producing. So I usually just, just label, you know, strings, rolls, synths, drums, percussion. You know what I'm saying? I usually go with those generic names because it helps me identify where I am. But you, you know, this could be helpful for this type of setup, I guess, because, you know, whatever. I mean, after this is labeled, I don't really care too much for, this is just the labeling system inside of here, which is why I was fascinated 
<laughs> with how I discovered this batch function where I can just do it this way. Um, Cause sometimes I will go in manually and label some of the stuff. And, and it's just those situations where the routing is, is complicated. I have complicated setups sometimes depending on the song and I will have the label stuff. But in most cases, it's just stereo one, stereo two, stereo three, stereo blah, 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 blah. Right. All right. So everything is coming out perfectly. And again, like I say, you have to come in and, and I'm gonna just na a label a couple of them just for the sake of the video, but whatever. And there you have it. You can, you know, color these tracks how you see, you know. Um, again, you gotta keep in mind that these are separate from what's going on up here, but you can work to keep the color. Now that's, that's off, but whatever. You can work to, you know, do whatever you want. Keep them color, you know, the color code intact, whatever. But that's if you do it this way. Um, maybe that's something that um personas fender can change in the future where where um whatever the MIDI can be like link to this the other thing i would rather see is a way to collapse these instruments is not a way to do that like these routing situations is a result of what i opened up here i could definitely get rid of some of them too you know what i mean that is a, a that's a result of what we created from here these belongs to contact now I will say you could do this. You could pack these. I think. Let me see. Okay. You could. I guess that works. And then you create a bus. Right. I you know. I guess that actually works. That's kind of cool. Well, that's the solution right there. I didn't really like to do that. There was a time it just didn't happen like this. <laughs> I'm not going to go through that. But, okay, that's the solution. This is how I use contact um, with the new discovered way of automatically routing with the label on it. That is kind of cool, I will admit. But I showed you guys how to use, how to find the outputs because things were different in the old contact setup it was always something like up here, like this view section, it was like something in this area you know, right there. And they put everything in the view or whatever, but it gets a little complicated because everything don't quite pop up. You know what I'm saying? That's the thing. Oh, um, Native visions probably need to change that because everything is not available all the time. You see what I'm saying? So it's like, it depends on where you are. Or if you say, let's go to rack view and then his. So I guess if the rack view is engaged, you should be able to find outputs. That's interesting. I can get rid of the side pane and we can just look at the instruments and the output. That is interesting. Okay. So here's another way. So if you're using drums, let's just get rid of these. Now drums is a little bit different. If you're using the old drums, like say the Abbey Roads, let's just click that. And I think I'm gonna leave these like this because it's already routed. So disregard the label or whatever. It's just one, two, three, four, whatever. All right, so if we're in contact and we're using the drums, and this goes for the, what is it? The 50s kit, the 60s, the 70s, the 80s, the 90s. Is there a 90s? This one is the 80s. This is... 
at the modern. This one is the vintage. That's the 50s, 70s. I don't think there's a 90s in here. It's just, and then studio drummer. And yeah, I think I think for those specifically because they all are built the same. So for something like this, Okay, I'm gonna get rid of this for, for, for right now. All right, so everything is coming out of stereo right now. So we have to go to the mixer and every track has its own tab. You have to actually click on it. And some of these are already muted. I don't know why, I'm not really sure. I don't know if that's something I did, but I haven't been here in a while, so. So, right, everything, this is like its own little mixture deal, kind of cool. These are individual direct mics on each channel, right? And they are all also routed through the overhead stereo, overhead mono, the room stereo, and the room mono, right? Those are also taken in. These are just pretty much overhead mics. Just imagine a couple of mics over the drums recording everything or picking up everything so this was this is what helps give you that room um ambience sound that surround you know that kind of just give it added more tone beefiness to the drums so let's route them out right you know that that would be the next step so in this case we see <laughs> that is still reflecting the old routing. And this is where we go back and, and, and do a custom, custom output here. Now, this is going to get interesting because I don't think contact can recognize like just really quickly. You have to, oh, this is where things get tricky right here. So let's do this quantity. Let's go to 16. Like before, we just, you know, just going to kind of go back to what we was doing. Let's mount that like that. Boom. And that's going to be the norm. And I'm going to change it. And that's more like what I'm going for. Or I probably could say mono, 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 stereo 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 so one two three four five five monos and then everything else is stereo i could do that yeah let's do that let's be let's let's be interesting you know i don't know if it works like that because oh okay so yeah it can let's see let's see one two three four so five one tracks now this is some i have don't remember if I even tried. So I'm going to say that, right? So five monos and come back in here and add more on top of that. And this time we're going to say two. Wait a minute. One, two, three. We're going to say three. Well, wait, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we're going for seven stereo tracks. Now, this is going to be interesting. I don't know if I should say, if I still should say stereo one, you know what I mean? Like, I, I'm i curious how this is going to work out. Or, yeah, let's not do that. Let's start at, okay, we already did five. Let's start at six. I think that's how this works. So let's go start that one at six right and then we're not going to click this button because the delete button is what deletes the previous routing so we're just going to leave it like that we're going to add on top of that 
So we got five monos and the rest of them are stereos. And I wonder how this will work out. So y'all bear with me. <laughs> bear with me. Um, I feel like I should save that. Because I think I'm going to have to shut down the contact to bring it back up to respect the routing. Because I don't think, um, let me see. Let's just do that. So we can bring it up later if we have, if if something changes. Yeah, because it still does that. And I think unload channel. Okay. Um load channel. It was something like that we had to do. But it's not working this time. I don't I don't know. Okay, effects presets. Uh, yeah, I'm not really sure, like, how to get it to, ah, oh, I forgot that part. Um, I don't know if it's something in here where I just say reload, quick load. Um, I, yeah, I can't, I can't remember. Um, is it this? If I click that. That's a purge button though. Restart forces the reinitiation of audio engine. Huh. Let's see. Oh, there we go. There we go. Okay. So yeah, you have to click this button right here. Right? If you're changing up anything and things are not, you know, you change your routing like you saw us do and you working with drums like this and it's not doing, so this is what resets it. Straight cool so now we don't have to go in and and do that whole um we want to do this over so i just saved the preset for nothing all right cool i like it it's cool all right so so okay now so everything is still coming out of one so let's push this to one, right? So mono one. And we're going to push this to mono two. And this one is mono three. Wait. Okay, cool. And then the Tom is um, four. Tom two is five. And then claps is coming out of six. Now this is where it gets interesting. Seven. I don't know what this is. Cowbell. Seven, eight. Yeah, I think that's seven, eight. I think that's cowbell. All right. So, so, so this will be nine, ten, eleven. 12. You know, this is interesting because this is <laughs> this is overhead stereo and this is mono. So like I should have said stereo and then this one's anyway, I don't think it matters. I th I think it, if it's mono, it's still going to. OK, never mind. I don't want to. I'm starting to confuse myself now. OK, let's see. Let's see what it sounds like. So. All right, so, okay, obviously we have to open up more, right? So we got, I'm going to just do all 16, whatever. So all 16, just so we can hear. Okay, let's put clap back at, let me see, this one, the seven. So this one should be stereo six. Right. Okay, it works. Let's see if it comes out. See if it comes up. And we see it kind of like those other instruments. So those other instruments are sharing the cowboy, cowbell channel. Oh, I'm tripping. That is a cowbell. All of those are cowbells. Okay, so so 
So Tamarine is coming out of seven, which is right right here, I think. It sounds like it's coming through everything, so maybe because it's bleeding. So I have to I have to do a little bit more because it's like these are coming through everything. Maybe because all right. So let's mute those. Okay, so it's not coming through the overheads. Right. Okay. Makes sense. And that's because of the sin. You know, we're also sending. So you got to pay attention to what you're doing up here. So if you don't want it to bleed. It seems like the tamarind is still picking up in the overheads because because the tamarind is probably it's going to come through the overhead, the stereo joint. I don't know. It's whatever. Um, the other thing is the kick. You want to like pay attention to and I'm just speak, speaking specifically from these type of instruments because just like we were like checking out the bleed and the other mics so this is the kick you know I need to relabel these so it can make sense <laughs> cause I think I I just I, I think that um oh, okay alright so this one is the kick snare hat time one time two and I think this one was the the claps the tamarine right there and the cowbell oh right so that's cowbell oh snap that's interesting so so the let me get rid of these other ones because this is what we were like using for those other instruments we just focus on this one now it looks like it's coming in like left and right the kick is left and <laughs> oh this is this is interesting so everything looks correct right here and I think because we split everything up so let's do that again actually let's see will this work let me see batch uh clear output selection create for each so this will be for each loaded i don't have the drum so this is not going to work for me so split instrument router first um, let's see does this work nope that's something different let's try the other one save current output no 
delete outputs. Okay. Reset. Reset so output selection for. Let's let's try this. Yeah, I I knew it wasn't gonna work for that. All right, so this one is one of those things where you have to do it custom, like I say. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So let's create twelve. Just make it stereo to keep it simple, and I think that's just like knowing what to click here is, was the thing that was interesting. So I'm gonna click this. So again, we have a different situation, but we just change it. So we're gonna click here, and now it should reflect. Okay, so kick stereo one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, it's doing it automatically. Nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Sweet. Oh, that's pretty that's pretty good. It did it for me. Okay. Okay, here we go. This is what I wanted. Okay, well, it's not. We are officially at the law state. I have no idea what is going on. Unload channel. I think that's what we had to do. Unload channel. opened up okay so let's do this let's delete this here and yeah, let's delete that and let's remove on use Actually, I want to get rid of that to remove yourself and let's bring contact in and let's just start all over. And I'm just going through this, guys, just so we can like really know what's going on. Um, let's start with. Yeah, let's be spontaneous. How about that? Still loading. All right, I think we can still work while it's loading. So, okay, so let's 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 go for the view, rag view. Get the outputs. Um, yeah. Okay. So let's go to the mixer and now the settings. And okay, kick is one, right? This one is two. And I think we had to start over to. So, yeah, like I say, like. Yes. yes yeah. Three, four. We're just kind of doing this video just to do like a thorough, you know, a th 
thorough check out. You know, see what's really going on with contact. I don't think anybody else is doing this. So, let's see, there's nine. This one is ten. Eleven. Oh, something. Got seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. That's thirteen. Wait a minute. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah. Eleven. Oh, there's a third time. That's why I wait. Because we did 12 last time. Was, okay. Um, yeah. That's why I was like, okay, there's 13. I must miscount something. All right, so. All right, so we. So real quick right here in this section right here you hear everything come in a little faintly because of the overhead the overhead is i think still in stereo mode kind of sort of we haven't opened up anything so let's open it up all the way up to 13 i believe right so to keep everything simple just make everything stereo and route everything the first time the correct way and you done when you start messing around with the routing situation like you saw me do here you start to like things start to get crossed and it it doesn't it doesn't do well because um they still haven't i don't think they're done updating contact where the inner workings of it is responding accurately and i will say it makes sense because I don't think a lot of you guys are using contact like this. Me and like four other people is probably using <laughs> using it like this. You know what I'm saying? Um, so yeah. And if we, you know, if I lift this up, we can see it's talking to the other channels. You know what I mean? You see that? Doom, boom. So those three times right there, that's the crash or the symbol. Bill, tamarine, the clap right there. You know, I mean, you know, your overheads are always going to pick up everything, which will be more so towards this. And then, like I said, you just have to label everything accordingly. Um, if you want to label this, you just click in here and just say whatever you want to say. I wouldn't be so. I I really really do this, but like I say, only in special situations where I need to really need to know what's going on because this does not reflect what goes on in Studio One. I think what goes on in Studio One is the most important thing when you're doing stuff like this. So unfortunately, you have to label, say, kick, snare, blah, blah, blah. You know, you have to label these or whatever. And I know this looks funny, but this is one instance. This is that instance, you know, especially with these drums. This is that instance. It's not going to be all of these different routes because this is separate. Right. But you can do.
whatever. This is, you know, one instance. You know, that's all it is. You do all your MIDI notes on one channel. And I'm going to show you another method that I use. You know, you can do it this way. Um, you can have your own processing. This, this is why you would do what you're doing. So you can put a, a EQ on this. You might put 1176 on the snare. You might, you know, put an API joint on the kick. You know, you may have some type of other filters, whatever the case may be. You know, that's how this works in terms of routing. You no, know, me per se, I don't really get hung up on this type of workflow, especially with drums like this, because there is this cool feature in Studio One that allows me to export everything out individually anyway. So, when I got this, this is me routing out every individual. So when I bounce these down in place, it turns it into audio. And then that turns it into its separate channel anyway. And then I can add my EQ and compression and reverbs and sends and all types of stuff that way. That's how I operate. Um, one thing you have to remember is if you're dealing with hi-hats, there is an open and closed version. So when you find those, it will export each hi-hat hi MIDI separately. You have to combine them together in order for it to be considered a hat or a hi-hat or whatever. I never separate those as open and closed when, because when you're doing stuff like this, oftentimes the closed hi-hats triggers the open. Right, like this. If you go with this, this is the closed hi hat. This is open. If you leave them separate, ain't but you're programming your drums where the closed hi hats is cutting off the open. You you're gonna be in trouble because then you have to go in and kind of chase and cut it off. Meaning, like cut the event, the clip at the end where it closed off before the the close high if that makes any sense so i use usually combine both of them on the same track that way it responds organically organically yeah and um i don't have to do any editing after it you know what i'm saying so i don't know if that makes sense but that's an open right there right And there was an open somewhere. I, I, if you guys need, if you have questions about what I just said, just hit the comment section with that. But that's, trust me, always add the open and the closed hi hats on the on on the same one. So, like in in this instance, wherever. The, I think this is the open. Okay, this is the track I'm supposed to add to. Right, so if I wanted to close it real quick, I can do like that. Oh, that was, that was kind of quick. Right? So that'll be on the same track. And when I'm bouncing down this audio, it would do just that. It would respond like I needed to, and I can get rid of that track. So just keep that in mind when you when you exporting. And that function I just use, it's simple. It's it's called I'll skim right over it. Explode pitches. So it's in your instrument parts. So you can always go here. I have a key command for that. So this is why. I, so many things it's hard for me to remember where things are because it's like oh i know i'm gonna use that often so i use that often you know if i need to split anything out so same for like superior drama if i'm using superior drama or anything like i don't really care about the routings per se when it comes to those type of instruments because like you know i always want the 
separate split of the snare the kick you know because i want to process them differently or whatever but i you know i don't really care for it so when i'm in machine it's the same thing like in machine actually i export stems there's so many guys it's just so fascinating with routing stuff in machine i don't do that i just don't because it's complicated you limit it because you can only go up to 16 just like contact you know what i mean you can only put 16 instruments in there and you can only come come out 16. the machine is the same thing because midi represents 16 channels period that's it in machine dude i'm doing like beyond 16 panels like 16 pads bro i have like all types of like groups doing different things i might use two two different um instruments in one kit or one group and then group b might be four group c might be two group d might be eight you know what i'm saying and before you know it that stuff adds up i'm using several i'm you know beyond the 16 so what i do is i just export the stem i don't worry about the routing and then just import it into studio one that's all that's how i get the that's how i that's how i do things it just makes sense better sense to me but you know to each his own it's a different method to anything all right this video's been too long anyway but i just wanted to go through and make sure that you guys kind of understand like how it works in studio one which is why i love studio one by the way like specifically because i use contact contact is is like um end all be all for me in terms of like like what you can do the instruments that i like to use in it and it's important that i have the assets the access access to like the, the routing and that, that routing works for several things and you know what before we end the video there is one thing i wanted to test because it was a question that was asked to me on the stream and it was battery four again just like what i just explained if i'm programmed something out of battery four i usually go bounce in place on the fly because you know, i'm just working keeping the current instrument up and i just kind of add stuff and just boom 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 adds up um that's the workflow in here but if i need to route anything in battery this is the first time this will be the first time i'm trying or attempting to do this so bear with me okay so i did realize that each of these cells maybe um yeah each each of these cells has their own so say that's one this one can be two now this is something we did realize that we can output we can change this is three the output individually and this would be one two three four so that has four so this come out of seven to eight and these are set up as stereo by default so we're going to do the first four all right so okay hold on hang on all right cool so it routed out because we don't hear anything <laughs> Cause we gotta open it up, right? One, two, three, four. That's it. Check that out. So let's go and pull up the mixer and see what happens. And then all of the other ones will still come through this one because they are still stereo right so but these right here will have its own so this is this one this one is that channel right there see that's why i like studio one or one of the reasons why i like studio one this is my first time actually doing that 
I tried doing that in Ableton, man. Nope, it wasn't having it. Mm -mm. Um, it's 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 different. <laughs> it's different, and and yeah, it's just different. Um, yeah, it's just different. So there you have it, guys. Ella, lifestyle going hard.